Satyam Satyang Param Dimahi. O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. O all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primary cause of all causes. And the primary cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause behind him. And he is independent because there is no other cause behind him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. Is she only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire and land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual although they are unreal. Appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in a transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in a transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the which material is world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation material. I meditate world. upon him for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitra Votra. Dharma Projita Kaitra Votra. Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam. Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Pure Ishwaraha. Kimba Pure Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hide Avaruddhi Tetra. Sadyo Ruddhi Avaruddhi Tetra. Krite Bhi Susu Subhis Takshanat. Krite Bhi Susu Subhis Takshanat. Completely rejecting all uh, religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are material. Motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare Such of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God's realization. It is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kalpataro Galitam Phalam. Nigama Kalpataro Galitam Phalam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Samgitam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Samgitam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Muhur Ahuraska Bhuvi Bhavukaha. Muhur Ahuraska Bhuvi Bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literature. The mature fruit of desire tree of Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. 
Svakata Krishna Shravatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Punya Shravana Kirtana Radhyantak Stohi Abhadrani Radhyanta Stohi Abhadrani Vidu Nati Suhit Satam Vidu Nati Suhit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature To hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita To hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita Is it self-righteous activity? Is this self-righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna, and for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart, Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praisu bhadrisu Nasta praisu bhadrisu Nityam bhagavata sevaya Nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati uttama sloke Bhagavati uttama sloke Bhaktir bhavati naistiki Bhaktir bhavati naistiki in, in this way the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge In this way the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge As he hears more about the uh, Krishna from the Bhagavatam as he hears about, more about Krishna from Bhagavatam and from the devotees and from the devotees he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord Tadarajas Tamo Bhava Tadarajas Tamo Bhava Kama Loba Dayas Chaye Kama Loba Dayas Chaye Chaitai Taran Avidam Chaitai Taran Avidam Sitvam Sattve Prasiddhati Sitvam Sattve Prasiddhati By development of devotional service By development of devotional service One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance One becomes freed from the mode of passion and ignorance And thus Lust and avarice are diminished. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When all these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate who remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante chascha karmani. Chidyante chascha karmani. Drista evat manishwari. Thus, bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus, the bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. Understanding of the supreme person, absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Sixteen. Verse number. Uh, this should be number thirty-four. Thirty-four. Mm. Mm. Thirty-four. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yo vai mamati baram asuravam sarajnam. Yo vai mati baramasura vamsarajinam Akshahini satam apanudad atma tantra Akyohini satam apanudad atma tantra Tvam dushtam unapadam atmani purushena Tvam dushtam anmapadam atmani purushena Sampadayan yadusu Ramyam Abhibrad Angam Sampadayan Yadusuram Myam Abhibrad Angam Translation by Srila Prabhupada O personality of religion, I was greatly overburdened by the undue military phalanxes arranged by atheistic kings, and I was relieved by the grace of the personality of Godhead. Similarly, you were also in a distressed condition, weakened in your standing strength, and thus he also incarnated by his internal energy in the family of the Yadus to relieve you, purported by Srila Prabhupada. 
The Asuras want to enjoy a life of sense gratification, even at the cost of others' happiness. In order to fulfill this ambition, the Asuras, especially atheistic kings or state executive heads, try to equip themselves with all kinds of deadly weapons to bring about a war in a peaceful society. They have no ambition other than personal aggrandizement and thus Mother Earth feels overburdened by such undue increases of military strength. By increase of the Asuric population, those who follow the principles of religion become unhappy, especially the devotees or devas. In such a situation, the personality of Godhead incarnates to vanquish the unwanted Asuras and to reestablish the true principles of religion. This was the mission of Lord Sri Krishna and he fulfilled it. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, in, uh, in life, there are certain things that are very, um, you would say, negative. And they are the uh, five types of ignorance or layers of ignorance which covers the jiva. And they are tamishra, under tamishra, moha, and maha moha, and tamas, moha, and maha moha. So what are these five things? So Prabhupada explains them in detail. Number one uh, is this tamishra. Tamishra means uh, one becomes upset and angry. And each living entity has minute independence. But it's the mis misuse of that minute independence that puts the living entity in a condition of, in, in, in condition, being conditioned by the modes of material nature. And therefore, he thinks that he can all, or he or she can enjoy, is, is a supreme enjoyer, like the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And they think, why should I not be free? Uh, uh, a free enjoyer like the Supreme Lord. So this forgetfulness of the constitutional position of the living entity uh, is, and, 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 and it results in anger that they cannot be the number one enjoyer, and envy, they, envious, they become envious of the Lord. So, although the living entity, all of us, are part and parcel of the Lord, uh, and that cannot be changed, uh, we want to become an equal enjoyer as the Lord. And when we try to do that, and we can't attain that, that uh, position, then, we want to merge into the Lord. So yesterday we gave the example of uh, uh, so-called Bhagavan Rajneesh. He tried to be an equal enjoyer as the Lord, or better. And eventually he failed at it. So therefore then he wanted to become one with the Lord. When you failed trying to own everything and being the supreme enjoyer and supreme controller, then you want to become everything. So uh, then he became like a, a Buddhist. So uh, this condition is called tamishra, either trying to become an equal enjoyer or, or greater enjoyer than the Lord and a proprietor of everything. And if you can't do that, you get angry and frustrated, and then you want to become one with the Lord. You merge into the Lord. You want to become everything. First you want to own everything, then you want to become everything, you see, out of frustration. So, uh, Prabhupada says that even in the field of spiritual realization, this tamishra mentality of living it is hard to overcome. And in trying to get out of the entanglement of material life, there are many who want to be one with the Supreme, even in their transcendental activities. This lower grade mentality of Tamishra continues. It's very dangerous. Then the second thing is under Tamishra, 
Anda, Tamishwa means considering death to be the ultimate end. This is the prayer and, and hope of every materialist sense enjoyer. They, they ardently pray, to who I don't know, but they ardently pray that when they die there's nothing after that. So that won't, they won't be held res responsible for what they've done. So the atheists, they, th think, they think that the body is the self and that everything is finished when the body is finished. They want to enjoy material life as far as possible during the existence of the body. And their, their theory is, or their hope is, as long as uh, they have this body, uh, they, uh, they want to uh, live prosperously, and it doesn't matter what kind of sins they commit. Uh, no one is responsible for anything uh, that they do during this life. That's their theory. And this is what is killing civilization today, this type of mentality. So uh, it's due to ignorance of the nature, the eternal nature of the soul and eternal life in the spiritual world. Then the third is uh, covering or of ignorance is moha, illusion. Uh, it's the condition of not knowing anything about the spirit soul. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, the third is tamas, ignorance, not knowing anything about the spirit soul. So this tamas uh, affects at least 99% of the whole population of the world probably in the whole universe, or at least in the lower planets and the middle planets and throughout some of the higher planets. So almost everyone is thinking that he is this body and there's no information of the spirit soul. You could do a little uh, experiment, uh, take, make, do, do some polling to see how many people believe they have a soul that's different than the body. You would see, surprisingly, that most people would say, no, I'm just this body, oh, there's no such thing as a soul. You know? Or if it's a soul, it's some kind of uh, nonsensical idea of the soul. Right? So this uh, tamas is all, it's all present everywhere in the material world today. And people are under the misconception, this is my body, this is me, and anything in, the relations, in relationship to this body is mine. Uh, so therefore, uh, there's a saying, there's a verse uh, that uh, <clears throat> the materialist, he thinks that this body is mine and the extension of the body like family is also mine, this land is mine, and these children are mine, and uh, this money is mine, everything is mine. So, so they get entangled in the struggle for existence to maintain all these things and keep them under their control, even though there's vicious competition amongst people. So uh, the, uh, the idea of the body, the family, the extended body, the land, the money, <coughs> all these things are, are entangling and a person becomes overwhelmed by this uh, tamas. And then there's this moha. Moha means, you know, that th I am the body. And it increases as, as one gets older. And thus the idea that I am this body and everything belongs to this body, uh, belonging to the body is mine. So this increases as life uh, continues. And 
it develops into the sectarian societies, nationalities, countries, and so forth. And people fight with each other based on the, these false illusions. And in Mahamoha means be mad after material enjoyment. And people are overwhelmed by this madness. And you, you can just see in this uh, Me Too uh, hashtag, there's so many complaints against big, powerful men and women who are just trying to exploit other people for sense gratification. So these are the five types of ignorance that cover people and keeps them entangled in the cycle of birth and death. So how can we get out of this? Well, yesterday the solution was given. It was that we should take up this chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And Prabhupada explains this uh, in other parts of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, also in this first canto. And he says that uh, Yeah, he says, Anarta Pasamam Sakshat Bhakti Yoga Mahoksaje Lokasya Janato Vidvans Chakri Sattva Samitam. The material miseries of the living entity, which are superfluous to him, can be mitigated, directly mitigated by the linking process of devotional service. But the mass of people do not know this, and therefore the learned Vyasadeva compiled this Vedic literature, which is in relation to the Supreme Truth. So, Prabhupada explains in the purport uh, that it is a great transcendental science, this Krishna consciousness, and especially the process of devotional service, and begins with the process of hearing and chanting. The name, fame, glory, etc. of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Revival of the dormant affection or love of Godhead does not depend on the mechanical system of hearing and chanting, but it solely and wholly depends on the causeless mercy of the Lord. Now, this is a little bit shocking statement. <clears throat> Let's see what Prabhupada means by this. When the Lord is fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of the devotee, he may endow him with his loving transcendental service. But even with the prescribed forms of hearing and chanting, there is at once mitigation of the superfluous and unwanted miseries of material existence. So on one hand, he's saying that everything begins with this hearing and chanting, as far as purification goes. Right. But... Uh, this revival of the dormant affection or love of Godhead does not depend on the mechanical system of hearing and chant. Okay. But then again, he says that uh, mitigation of a, a lot of the troublesome things in one's life takes place by the chanting. So what, are, what does he mean by that? So that's explained in the Nectar of Devotion where it says that there are six characteristics of pure devotional service which are as follows. Pure devotional service begins immediate, it brings immediate relief from all kinds of material distress. And number two, pure devotional service is the beginning of all auspiciousness. And pure devotional service puts one in transcendental pleasure. And pure devotional service is rarely achieved. And those in pure devotional service deride even the conception of liberation. And pure devotional service is the only means to attract Krishna. So, when we 
what, what is the beginning of, of, of pure devotional service? It's the chanting and hearing on a regular basis. Therefore, it says, when the Lord is fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of the devotee, he may endow him with his loving transcendental service. So, Krishna can easily give liberation. He kills demons and they get liberation. It seems pretty easy. But he rarely gives pure devotional service because by pure devotional service, he is vulnerable. In fact, he appreciates the sincere service of the devotees so much that he subordinates himself to the devotee voluntarily, like in the case of Arjuna. He's taking orders from Arjuna. He's driving Arjuna's chariot. In the case of Mother Yasoda, he, he lets her catch him and tie him up. And even he acts as if he's afraid and has tears. And he's letting her uh, discipline him. So this is all unimaginable. Uh, even if one goes to Vaikuntha, they could not imagine such things happening. Yeah. So that vulnerability uh, doesn't mean that Krishna is weakened in any way. But due to love he uh, of his devotee, he's willing to subordinate himself. So therefore it says, uh, when the Lord is fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of the devotee, he may endow him with his loving transcendental service. But even with the prescribed forms of hearing and chanting, there is at once mitigation of the superfluous and unwanted miseries of material existence. So this is something that people actually experience. That if they decide to take up the chanting and associate closely with genuine devotees, the worst problems that are harassing them go away. It's unbelievable. I mean, I experienced that. I don't know if any of you have experienced that. But I've, I personally experienced that. And, and that's what he's saying here, that such mitigation, and he says that but even with the prescribed forms of hearing and chanting, there is at once mitigation of the superfluous and unwanted miseries of material existence. Such mitigation, mitigation means lessening of, material affection does not wait for development of transcendental knowledge. Rather, knowledge is dependent on devotional service for the ultimate realization of the supreme truth. So that's... A verse in Bhagavad Gita, I mean Srimad Bhagavatam, Vasudevi, Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga. Uh, so that, yeah. So this verse is in the second chapter, verse number, verse number seven. By rendering devotional service unto the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. So therefore he says, rather, he says, such mitigation of material affection does not wait for development of transcendental knowledge. Rather, knowledge is dependent on devotional service for the ultimate realization of the supreme truth. So this is an important purport. It's... Uh, Canto 1, chapter 7, verse number 6. And it all depends on association with devotees and regular hearing and chanting. All these things begin to happen in the life of a devotee. <clears throat> so therefore, uh, if we see how dangerous it is associating with materialistic people. Prabhupada says, the asuras want to enjoy a life of sense gratification, even at the cost of others' happiness. Yeah. They make other people suffer because they want to be number one enjoyer. In order to fulfill this ambition, the asuras, especially atheistic kings or state executive heads, 
tried to equip themselves with all kinds of deadly weapons to bring about a war in a peaceful society. So we see the United States and Russia weaponize other people. They have to pay a lot of money for it. And they usually weaponize both sides of a controversy. Right? It's like the United States weaponized Saddam Hussein and Russia weaponized Iran. And then they started fighting each other, the Iranians and uh, the Iraqis. And one million people died, mostly all men, in that war. And nothing was gained by it. Iraq invaded uh, Iran, Iran pushed them back, and one million men would die for nothing. <laughs> but the United States made a lot of money, and Russia made a lot of money by selling all the weapons that they used. Same thing is happening today. It happens in Pakistan and Kashmir. It's happening between Armenia and Azerbaijan. It's happening all over the world. And who, who wins the war? Not one side or the other. It's the people who are selling the arms and the guns and the bombs and all these things. So Prabhupada says they have no ambition. That's these people who are making all these deadly weapons. They have no ambition other than personal aggrandizement. In other words, accumulating their own wealth and sense gratification. And thus Mother Earth feels overburdened by such undue increases of military strength. By increase of the ascetic population, those who follow the principles of religion become unhappy, especially the devotees or devas. So, the only thing we can do to offset that is spread Hare Krishna uh, Mahamantra through the Sankirtan movement. That's the only way to slow this down or stop it. There's no other way. Too many people are making money selling, manufacturing and selling arms. Now, it's not only the United States and Russia. It's also Israel. It's also it used to be Yugoslavia and uh, other countries, Pakistan and India. They all manufacture uh, weapons of destruction and they try and sell them. Germany, England, and they're all competing with each other to supply uh, countries and they also foment wars so that they can sell the arms so that the people can kill each other. In such a situation, the personality of Godhead incarnates to vanquish the unwanted Asuras and to reestablish the two true principles of religion. This was the mission of Lord Sri Krishna and he fulfilled it. So, will Lord Krishna appear now because there's so much turmoil in the world? Well, he has appeared. He has appeared as uh, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. He has appeared as the as Srila Prabhupada spreading Harinam Mahamantra all over the world. The question is, will we be part of that or not? So that's a decision we have to make. Uh, if we actually understand what is the mission of Srila Prabhupada, and Prabhupada said once, uh, you know, when he came to the United States, at one point he said, if the Ameri if American government knew what I wanted to do, they would never let me come here. So what did what Prabhupada want to do? He wanted to stop this culture of sense gratification and establish Krishna consciousness. He wanted to stop cheating religions, just like it. Uh, Krishna says uh, that Dharma Pujita Kaitrava Utra. Kaitrava means cheating religion, where in the name of religion people want uh, pursue sense gratification uh, and uh, material advancement. 
as the goal rather than purification of, uh, of false ego, etc. So today we can see that there is a lot of turmoil coming up in the world. What are we going to do about it? We have a great mission Prabhupada has given us, Lord Chaitanya has given us, Krishna has given us, as representatives of the Lord. Our mission is to help as many people as possible come out of these five types of ignorance and come to the level of hearing and chanting. And we can promise them, if you do this and you associate with devotees regularly and you hear and chant, these miseries that are afflicting you, they'll go away. And I don't know if you've experienced it, I've experienced it personally. And I experience it every day, that there are always new uh, challenging issues that come up that put you, put me and other people also in a state of anxiety. But if we just take refuge in the holy name and association of devotees and, and engage in regulated devotional service, one can rise above the ignorance that is afflicting us and become instrumental in turning the tide. Instrumental in turning the tide. So, I'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Yes, Maharaj? Yeah. Could you explain what, uh, what does it mean by, what is the term again? Um, hmm. Something I said? Or something? Make, you said it, was, you read from there. Me mechanical hearing and... Uh, oh, yeah. Could you explain it? Well, uh, it, it gets into the subject also of chanting with feeling, right? So the quality of the chanting is something that's being, uh, let's say, uh, focused on. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, let's see, where was it? Yeah, you read it somewhere there. Okay, so if we have, first of all, a person who's helpless in a very difficult situation where they don't see how they can be happy one way or the other, like Arjuna, right? Mm -hmm. They can feelingly utter the holy name. Whereas a person who utters the holy name, uh, who is, is, uh, has great material satisfaction, they cannot be so sincere. So a person is saying, well, you know, 401k is there, I got the house, got the Tesla, I got this, I got that, and the sense gratification is good. And yeah, I'll also chant Hare Krishna. Uh, so this is First Canto chapter 8, verse number 26. Uh, and then, and then uh, 26 and then 27 says my obeisances are unto you these are the prayers of Queen Kunti who are the property of the materially impoverished you have nothing to do with the actions and reactions of the material modes of nature you are self-satisfied and therefore you are the most gentle and are master of the monists so when it says namo kinchino vitaya Kinchana Vitae means the property of the materially impoverished. So when a person is harassed seriously by material nature and by their own ignorance and they're in, put in these very ho horrific situations, that's when they start chanting seriously. Like just imagine you're in an airplane going over the Pacific to get to go to Mayapur for a fest for the for the Gorpanima festival, and the plane starts going down. And the pilot says, ladies and gentlemen, we've lost control of the plane. If you know some prayer, you should say it now. So, a lot of people just freak out, right? Start screaming and hugging each other and crying and 
and just going berserk, right? What would you do as a devotee? What would you do? And how seriously would you chant? <laughs> yeah, that would be probably, probably the best chanting you've ever done in your life, right? <laughs> and me too. That's what I would do also, right? So you see, that's why. Uh, very intense chanting. Very intense, right? It wouldn't be the Hare Krishna. No, it wouldn't be like that, right? You would be focusing on every name of the Lord with all intent. So you see, that's why it says here that whereas a man who utters the holy name in great material satisfaction cannot be so sincere. Mm -hmm. Helpless, a helpless person can feelingly utter the holy name. Now we don't, we can't artificially put ourselves in a condition of helplessness, right? Uh, but we should always be aware Padam padam yet vipadam natisam. That there's danger in every step. And therefore, we should never take for granted when there's success and never be discouraged by failure. We should just be steady in chanting and hearing so that our mind becomes very sober. One has to be dira, not affected by success, not affected by failure, but steady in devotional ser service. Not affected by life, not affected by death. One has to be steady in devotional service. And in that way, uh, we're ready, we're, we're, we're poised at any moment to leave the body. We know that at any moment something could happen. Just like someone's driving down driving to Mangal Arati and a deer jumps in front of their car and they have an accident and the, they kill the deer. So that's possible, it can happen to anyone. I mean the worst, the worst thing that can happen is you're driving at night, it's raining really hard, you don't have good visibility and there's a little child that's walking in the street and you run over them. That's like the worst thing that could happen. Killing a deer is one thing, but killing a human being is something else. And that could happen easily. That's why we have to be always careful with a car, especially driving at night in the rain, uh, and if you're tired on top of it. So, or driving early in the morning, where it's raining and it's dark, and sometimes there are streets where there's no, uh, no lights. You know, it's very dark. I remember the first time I came here, uh, I could hardly see anything. It was, there, were, there were no lights or nothing. Coming up that big hill, there were no lights at all. It looked like we were in some, in hell, you know. And when we got, when the first time I came to the temple here, when it was, it was just a broken down house, and it's far away from Seattle and everything, I was thinking to myself, wow, this is like, uh, <laughs> it's like going to the North Pole. <laughs> yeah. and uh, it was really uh, in a sense it was discouraging uh, but anyway we survived so uh, we should feel helpless uh, in all situations and depend completely on the mercy of the Lord but that doesn't mean we're lazy we have to be steady in our practice of devotional service so I don't know does that answer your question <coughs> mm. yeah. You wanted to know about this one particular statement. You, you, you read it, yeah. It was what was the word? Was it mechanical? Or? Yeah, it says here. <coughs> it says here. This is uh, First Canto, seventh chapter, verse number six. Yeah, you, you read in, it in yeah. the purport, and it says. Revival of the dormant affection or love of Godhead does not depend on the mechanical system of hearing and right, chanting, right, right, right. Yes, but it solely and wholly depends on the causeless mercy of the Lord. When the Lord is fully satisfied with the sincere efforts of the devotee, he may endow him with his loving transcendental service. 
But even with the prescribed forms of hearing and chanting, there is at once mitigation of the superfluous and unwanted miseries of material existence. Those are the verses Anato Pasamam Sakya Bhakti Yoga? Yes. Okay. Anato Pasamam Sakya Bhakti Yoga. Yeah, that's, that's uh, was the point. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So knowledge does not precede devotional service. The knowledge follows devotional service. So the understanding that is... There's that a lot of points here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, exactly. It really depends on the mercy, you know. It's, it, it's not because I'm chanting, I'm hearing, but we should depend that... And, uh, we should expect the mercy of the Lord upon us. Because as this is about going on chanting. And it all depends you, on the sweet will, will of the Lord. Right. So, therefore, the sincere chanting, the sincere execution of devotional service, the regularity of it, all these things are important. But still, ultimately, it's up to the Lord. Mm -hmm. right. So... Therefore, the Goswamis, they never say, said, I have seen Krishna. They're mm -hmm. always expecting to see the Lord. So, just like uh, one man went on the news and said, Jesus came to my kitchen and sat down and had a cup of coffee with me last night. <laughs> right. That's a bunch of nonsense, right? <laughs> But the Goswamis, they never said, I saw Krishna. They always said, they're always expecting to see the Lord. And in that expectation, they were engaged in devotional service intensely all the time. And to such a point where even their eating and sleeping was diminished almost to nothing. So, uh, I mean, we can't imitate that, but we can follow the principle. The principle is we should be steady in devotional service, regularly hearing and chanting, and uh, always expecting or anticipating the mercy of the Lord. Is that equal? It's equal to say God helps those who help themselves. Yes, yes. But he's not obliged to. We shouldn't take it for take anything for granted. We should be, uh, see, that's why Lord Chaitanya says, Janmani, Janmani, Shwari, Bhavatad Bhakti Rahai Tuki Tvai. I don't want uh, any amount of money or wealth. I don't want any number of followers. Uh, I don't want liberation. I'm just satisfied serving life after life. So that's the main point. So this, this understanding, uh, it uh, actually can only be awakened or felt by constant association with the devotees. And Cannot or can? No, can be felt. I mean, yes, can. Yeah. Yes. By constant hearing, associating, I mean, being in association with devotees. Yeah, see, the, Is that like the, the idea of this mechanical chanting. Mm -hmm. So I had a friend of mine who was a very advanced devotee. And uh, I asked him once, are, are you chanting? He said, ah, yes, I'm chanting, but not like you. I said, what? <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I chant once a year on New Year's <laughs> Eve at 12 o'clock, and I, went, and I just chanted one time, Hare Krishna. But I say it sincerely. But you guys, you're just going, how do you say, how do you say, you're not, you know, I don't do that. <laughs> See, now that's nonsense. It's madness. But it sounds, it sounds, you know, like he's a real hero, right? Yeah, Chants yeah. once, <laughs> but really sincerely. The Prabhupada didn't ask us to do that. He asked us to do it minimum 16 rounds every day. So even if it's mechanical, it's the saying that even if it's mechanical, you get, you get instant relief. Mm -hmm. Right, and so, so by pure devotional service, these six these six wonderful things happen. And first is you become relieved of of uh, these miseries, and you become happy and and so forth. So, 
we should be steady in our devotional service. That's the main thing. Oh, Maharaj, sorry. It is another very important point. Uh, we have lot, some discussion about it. So when we read those characteristics of devotional service, or six we just mentioned from the of devotion, it's speaking about pure devotional service because sometimes the new five devotees, they think that now, since I'm just, I'm initiated now, you know, I'm chanting, I'm falling for a principle, everything, all these things will be applied. Uh, I'll get all the results of this. But here it is said a pure devotion. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be kind of uh, complacent thinking, oh, now I'm a devotee and, and uh, I am. Um, well, that's, that's, that's where the helplessness comes in. You, you, you don't you know, say, I did this, I did that. Mm. There's a saying even in, uh, in, uh, in my language, it's a person who always says, I, 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 is like nonsense. You know? mm. It's like Obama when he would give a, uh, uh, a speech. Mm. He would always say, I did this, I did that. Like, mm. 50 times in the speech, right? So, uh, it's, the devotee always gives, is, gives credit to the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's by the mercy of the Lord that we were able to do this. Even the Christians say that all the time, and the Muslims also, inshallah, mm -hmm. by the mercy of the Lord. Right? So we should always be glorifying Krishna in one way or other, and not try and take credit uh, rather to be happy to render service on a regular basis. This regulated devotional service is very important. Regulated hearing and chanting, regulated deity worship, regulated sankirtan. Everything has to be regulated. So the, our goal should be